So I got done watching Basket Case 2 and 3 for the first time. I got the Synapse Blu-rays, which look really good. The transfers are pretty HD. So if you like these movies and you haven't upgraded, pick these up because they look really good. Uh, so yeah, Basket Case 2 and 3. I'm going to talk about the second one in this recording. Uh, Basket Case 2, this one, was written and directed by Frank Henelotter, and so was the third one. Uh, and this came out in 1990, eight years after the first one, but it takes place the same year as the first one. Uh, it picks up right after, and we got Belial and Dwayne on the run. They recover from their wounds. You thought they were dead, but nope, they're okay. Uh, I mean, they fell over 100 feet from the like roof of a hotel, but they're okay. Um, so they're alive, and now they bump into someone that their aunt used to know back in the day, and she gives them shelter, she's taking care of them, she's hiding them from the police, you know, they're wanted, because they killed a bunch of people in part one, or at least Belial did, and, you know, Belial finds a girlfriend, and so does Dwayne, and there's reporters and people trying to capture Belial and Dwayne because they're wanted, and they want that million dollar bounty. So let's jump into my likes for Basket Case 2. I like that this one picks up right after the events of part one. They show you the end of part one. It feels like you're watching one of the Friday the 13th movies where they show the last like five minutes. And But I just like the good continuity. You got, you got the same actor playing Dwayne. And they even throw in a couple of characters from part one in the movie that have like little roles, little cameos. And so I like that and I like the bigger budget look and feel of this movie. It clearly had a lot more money. So there's double the baskets, double the cases, a lot more freaks. And, you know, the cinematography looks much better in this one. There's a lot more, there's a lot of colorful lighting, especially in the attic of this house of freaks. And interesting fact, the person who did the cinematography for this movie did the cinematography for Nightmare Weekend, which is a very bizarre film I reviewed recently. If you haven't seen that movie, you should check it out because it's fucking weird. But not only is the cinematography improved in this sequel, but also the effects work. They don't use stop motion in this one, but the effects in this movie are done by Gabe Bartolos, who did Jason Lives, who did Skin Deep, another movie I reviewed that's really weird and out there. And, of course, he did a couple of the Leprechaun movies, especially the earlier ones. So he's kind of a kind of a big name in Hollywood when it comes to special effects. He's done a lot of good effects work. And the effects work in this movie is also good. I like the look of Blau once again. Uh, they changed the color of his eyes in this one. They were blue in the, the last one. Now they're like green. Uh, they didn't really bring back his creepy, chilling scream and that, you know, weird yell of his in part one they didn't bring that back but uh he still looks pretty cool in this one and his eyes are still glowing in the open so i like that they brought back that element the glowing eyes because i thought that looked kind of creepy in part one and i liked the characters of marcy and Artie and the whole subplot involving them you know they're going after Dwayne and uh, belial because there's a one hundred or a one million dollar reward for finding them, so it makes sense why they're doing all this investigative work and in trying to find them. And I just like their chemistry, their dialogue, and I think they're the better actors in the movie. They're not too hammy. They're just the right amount of comical, especially especially Artie, who's the guy in uh, the Mutilator. But I wish there was more of him and Marcy. There's not a whole lot of them in the movie, especially Artie. I wish there was more of him in the film because that's how much I liked his character. And I really liked the ending of this movie. The last five minutes kind of surprised me where it went. There's a little twist involving one of the characters that I didn't see coming. And there's like some role reversal here. You know, Dwayne and Belial in the first movie, you know, Dwayne or Belial was constantly like cock blocking Dwayne and now Dwayne's upset that Belial's the one that's finding a girlfriend and having sex, and he's alone, and so now he's trying to cock block him. So I like how the rules are kind of reversed in this movie. As for my dislikes, I think that the actor who plays Dwayne is still not a good actor in this one. 
Uh, and they have way too many flashbacks in this movie. In the second act especially, they just keep cutting back to shit we've already seen in part one. And if you're watching part two, you should already know what happened in part one. So it's unnecessary. After the opening, you don't need to cut back to part one again. They do it like two or three more times in the movie, and it just slowed the film down, and it was just clearly like padding the runtime. I also feel like the writing of this movie isn't that good. It just feels like they're juggling too many different ideas here. Like they should have focused more on Dwayne and Susan if they're gonna have that supposed romance between them. It just didn't work for me. Yet again, just like part one, the forced love interest, it's even worse in this one because his first conversation with this girl is about running away together because he loves her. Like, I didn't see them bond and get to that point in their relationship. Like, how much time went by between him getting to this house of freaks and then waking up and walking around with the cane and like I'm not sure how much time went by but their relationship just was poorly written it doesn't really need to be here they they should have focused more on the reporter and Artie and focused more on Dr. Freak and her you know relationship with her like children her freaks that she's got there like they just feel like they're there to be there. They don't have any personality. They don't really give any of these other people in this house a moment to interact with Belial or Dwayne. Like, there's just nothing to them. They're just there to be there. And I also didn't like the looks of some of them and how just exaggerated these people's deformities are. Like, some of them, they're not even human. Like, these are supposed to be human beings with deformities but some of them are just straight up like hybrids of different animals like one of them's a fucking frog one of them looks like a straight up like gargoyle like these aren't even some of them are just like aliens these aren't even people that are deformed they're just fucking aliens so i just think they went a little too far with some of these deformities they should have let you know dial it back make it a little bit more grounded. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the first one's not grounded in reality, but this just took it a little too far. I feel like if they just looked more freaky, and but kind of more realistic, it would have worked better for me. I also just found this one not really funny. It, there wasn't anything that made me laugh like the first one. It's just goofy. Like, there's movies that are just wacky and goofy, but they don't really make you laugh. Then there's movies that are actually funny, like part one. Like, it's kind of silly, yeah, the premise, but it worked. It made me laugh. This one was just, like, corny and goofy, but I wasn't really laughing my butt off. So final thoughts, this is a bigger budget but less gritty sequel that just dials up the craziness, adds a lot more freaks, and improves in some ways over the original, except for the writing. I think Frank Henelotter had a great idea here. I like the premise, but I just feel like he failed to make a great movie out of that idea. So when it comes to Basket Case 2, I still had a decent time with it, so I'll give it 3 out of 5 stars. Alright, spoiler discussion. So, in the opening, like I said before, we get the opening recap of the end of Part 1. They fall to their death, but nope, there's, they're alive. They clearly died in Part 1, but now they're alive, and we see the one lady from the hotel in part one on the TV doing an interview and Belial's eyes start to glow again and now he's controlling uh, Dwayne, which he didn't do in part one, uh, but now he has that ability. And also when he kills the guard, it's like a callback to when he killed Dr. Needleman in part one because he, when he gets in the hospital room, he's on the wall like sideways and then grabs him by the face and rips it off so that was a nice little callback to dr needleman's kill and they break out of this hospital so easily <laughs> i mean why weren't they handcuffed to the bed a but b it's just kind of lazy writing how they break i mean it's just it's a comedy so i'll accept it but it's like really this guy's too busy flirting with like a nurse and then this guy is sleeping behind the desk and they just walk on out and he's got like this big bloody bandage wrapped around his head and no one notices this guy 
walking out. He's not dressed up like a nurse or anything. He's just walking out, <laughs> grabbing like a custodian cart and pushing it out of the front door and no one sees him. And then also conveniently at that moment when they're walking out of the hospital, that's exactly when Dr. Freak and uh, Susan or whoever, I think it's Susan, that's when they pull up. They pull up at the exact same moment that they're walking out the front door. So Dr. Freak, her name's Ruth, and she was a friend of the aunt of Belial and Duane. Uh, and so she introduces them to all the freaks in the attic where she keeps them. And we only hear one of them talk, I think. It's the one that does opera singing, Lorenzo. You know, she introduces the other ones, but they don't ever really speak much, and they don't ever do much. These freaks are just kind of there. So we find out that Dr. Ruth had a kid that died at birth who was deformed, but they completely changed that in part three. But, you know, that kind of explains why she's running this house and why she's sensitive to the topic of people with deformities and people calling them freaks and, you know, exploiting them. So she takes... Uh, Belial to this guy named Lyle Barker. He's got like this fun house thing or, you know, this sideshow thing in his backyard where people go pay money to look at people with deformities. And But it's all fake. And he put out like a false ad that said, I have Belial from New York. He's here. Come see him. So she takes Belial there to kill him. And it's all off camera. Which I forgot to talk about my negatives, which is the kills in this movie. I think they're all off camera. I don't remember a single one, so that's a bummer. The kills in this movie suck. In part one, you got a guy getting sawed in half, people getting like gutted, their faces, you know, cut open and shit. In this one, you got like nothing. So, but yeah, this scene just kind of felt thrown in. I feel like you could take it out. I'm not sure how much time has gone by between the opening when he breaks out of the hospital and this moment when he goes downstairs and talks to Susan about running away together, but I'm assuming it had to be months, at least weeks, enough time for them to build a friendship and then him fall in love with her because the first conversation we see between them is about him loving her and wanting to run away together. And during this scene, his shirt changes colors. It clearly went from a light blue to a light yellow from shot to shot. I'm not sure how they fucked that up on set. We get Dwayne butt-ass naked yet again in this movie in front of the mirror looking at his scar tissue on his side. And we get a flashback to a flashback in part one that was just not necessary. It's just kind of filler that you could just take out of the movie. Less flashbacks, more fleshing out these characters that are in love. We get to hear Belial laugh for the first time in this movie. Uh, it's the only time he laughs. He doesn't laugh in part one. He just yells and screams a lot. This one, we get to hear him laugh. And during that scene, it looked like it was clearly like an actual actor with Belial makeup around him. So it's like one of the few shots where they did that. Because I think the rest is like an animatronic like puppet and then in that shot, it was like an actual actor in Belial makeup laughing. Then Dr. Ruth starts to give like her Braveheart speech in the attic, rallying the troops together in the attic. Like, you know, we got to fight for our lives and our freedom, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it kind of got me excited because I thought there was going to be like this battle. Like a bunch of cops were going to, because they know that, she, you know, she's been busted, you know, that the reporter came and saw that Dwayne and Belial were there. So she's like... They're going to come back probably with cops, SWAT. You know, these people are wanted. So I thought that there was going to be all kinds of people storming in and then these freaks were going to unleash hell on them and tear them apart. But that never happens. Instead, what happens is Artie goes in there to take pictures with this loud camera. Like he's trying to be sneaky about it, but this camera makes a lot of noise when you take a picture. And he gets in the attic to take pictures of Belial and encounters all the freaks and he just keeps taking pictures it creates like a strobe light effect and i guess he's just frozen in fear he had so much of you know so much time to get back down the stairs and leave but he just stays there frozen in fear and gets killed off camera then we get this scene at the bar where phil the investigator the actor from 
from beyond, the bad guy in that movie, he gets ambushed and attacked by Bilal and his part of his face gets ripped off. I don't think he gets killed. I'm assuming he's dead, but we don't really see him die. He's still alive. And then even Marcy, she gets attacked later on and Bilal just makes her a freak. So she doesn't even die. This movie has a low body count. How many people die in this movie? One? Two? Um, but yeah, like I just thought it was funny that they're all hiding in the bar trying to blend in, like look like normal people by wearing these masks that are just so small and don't even actually cover up their deformities. So that was just kind of goofy and that made me laugh. I guess Belial does have a dick. I wasn't sure in part one, but in this one, he clearly does have one because he's getting lucky with uh, Eve. And so, yeah, he fucks her. And uh, Dwayne's trying to have sex with Susan, but she reveals that she's six years pregnant but she doesn't look pregnant at all. She's got a flat stomach and she's got this monster in her womb that's just staying in there. It's too shy to come out and she's just going to let it come out when it wants to. And it, she's, it pops out of her stomach, but she's like, oh, it just comes out every now and then for air. Like, again, how long has it been since the beginning and this moment that he hasn't had enough chance to figure this out already? That's what I'm saying. Like, the relationship just was poorly written. I don't believe it for a second that he loves her and she loves him. There's just no chemistry there, no connection, but whatever. So she's warning him, like, you know, you can't, you're not going to like what you see. So, and I thought she was going to say that she had like teeth down there, like that one movie, teeth. Uh, but this thing that comes out of her stomach, it looks almost identical to the monster penises and VHS viral, that segment the Spanish one, so it looked very similar to that. And so, yeah, this sets off Dwayne. Like, he freaks the fuck out. He's, like, pissed off. Like, Dwayne, uh, Belial's getting lucky, and I thought I found a normal girl. I thought I was about to have normal sex with a normal girl, but this chick ain't normal. I'm pissed off. So he goes upstairs, cock blocks Belial. Or, no, I think he's already done at that point. He goes up there. Baseball bats him in the face, takes him downstairs, and is like, you know, if I can't be happy, you can't be happy. Uh, we gotta be together. We're just two halves. We gotta be a whole. And he, he stitches him on back onto his side, and that's how the movie ends. But I thought it was really ridiculous how long it took for the freaks and Dr. Ruth to reach him in that room. Like, he pushes... Uh, Susan out the window and it seems like it was an accident I think it was an accident but he pushes her out the window she lands on their like picnic table outside while they're eating and it took them like five minutes like think about how much time had to go by between that moment and him going up to the attic to knock out Belial take him downstairs, I think to the second floor. I think that's where he is when he's stitching him. He's stitching him onto his side. And then once it's all done, like, that's when they reach that room. Like, really? Like, and when he's stitching, like, Belial is, like, screaming in pain. And they couldn't follow that voice. And, like, it's just ridiculous. And that whole scene with Susan... Uh, revealed Dwayne's true colors. You know, he's a hypocrite. You know, he doesn't like freaks. He doesn't want to be with a freak. But the whole movie, he was, like, acting pro-freak and, like, like anti-saying the word freak. You know, like, oh, you shouldn't judge them on, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then when he found out that Susan was a freak, he flipped out. So it's like he's speaking out of both sides of his mouth. So anyways, those are my thoughts on Basket Case 2. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. Do you like it more than Part 1 or Part 3? Where does it sit in your ranking? Let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking my cartoon face in about 5 seconds. And remember, it's all opinion. You don't need to get butthurt about it. <laughs>